One of the things that seems to confuse my students as much as anything is when it comes to stick the bridge on. So I thought we'd made a sh make a short video um, just to show the process. So as they've got something to look at prior to attempting the job, it really isn't that difficult, but um, it might be wise for us to go through the process. The first thing we're going to do is to remove the tape that I put on the top underneath where the bridge is going to sit. I did that simply because we don't want to be scraping off all the shellac. Um, we can avoid that by putting tape on it. The tape's approximately three millimeters smaller than the bridge all the way around. And so we have to remove it. To do that, we just simply put our ruler against the front edge like so. And very gently, just cut through the shellac, just gently like this. We need to cut through it just to make sure it doesn't splinter when we come to take it off. Because it can, in fact, Turn around, <clears throat> just do our last cut, like so, and then remove the tape. <coughs> we need to remove the tape carefully, because we've got to remember that the grain on the top will run in both directions. And we don't want to go tearing the grain out at this stage of the proceedings, like so. So having removed the tape, the next process is to make sure, of course, that the bridge is in precisely the right spot. This is a 650mm string length, so I want the bridge at 651.6mm. The frets have been compensated, uh, so as uh, the whole guitar will play as well in tune as it can. Now there's two ways to be, of making sure that the bridge is in the right place. One you can make a gadget such like this where the bridge fits on a bar like so. The other end has like a dummy nut I suppose so that would sit in there like that and that would plonk the bridge down precisely where it should be. I'm actually not going to use this because it's not quite the right string length. And that the problem with this is that over the years I've been asked for all sorts of different string lengths and so you need all sorts of different ones of these uh, in order to do the job. So the next best thing uh, is simply a long ruler such as this. So what we're going to do is set the ruler at 651.6 millimeters, like so. So all we need now really is to put a, a saddle in there, just a, just a dummy saddle uh, that's going to fit. We pop our bridge down, we know approximately where it is because we've got uh, our mark there. And then with this ruler set at 651.6 millimeters, the base of it here will sit against the front edge of our fretboard, like so, and our ruler comes down like so. So there we are. The front edge of the bridge saddle is now at 651.6 millimeters, precisely. For those of you interested in buying a ruler like this, it's like a a giant vernier gauge. Um, you can buy them from Chris Vesper at Vesper Tools. So now having got our bridge in the right position, we're simply going to hold it there with a bit of masking tape. Now this is painter's masking tape. 
uh, which is important because it will remove easily and won't damage the French polished finish. Ordinary masking tape can in fact uh, damage the, the finish. It's got something to do with the adhesive. So be wary of that. Point number two is that you wouldn't attempt to stick the bridge on till at least three days after the guitar is finished. And in this instance, I usually last uh, wait about a week before I do it. So we'll just check one more time. The bridge is in the right place. Which it is. Just make sure. I moved it. Well, that's a good exercise to show that it's very easily moved. Now, this painter's masking tape does not have super adhesion on it, so you have to be a little bit careful. So that's good. That's set nicely in its right position. We'll put it aside. <coughs> the next job now is again to tape up the bridge all the way around to make sure that uh, because we need to remove. So I'll just do this while I'm talking and make sure that's nicely clean up against the front edge of the bridge, like so. Now that gives us our position. We can remove these little pieces, like so, and find our center line. Our center line is already marked on the top. We did that when um, we first set the bridge on in order to tape it up. So we can still see our center line. It's a little pencil line marked directly. Uh, under the finish right there. So I'll just trans uh, transfer all that and we'll mark it on our bits of tape which is precisely there. I've already marked the centre line of the bridge with a little white dot that's done with the China Graph pencil, so it'll rub off very easily. So now, we can push that up against our tape, make sure our little white dots on our center line, and tape up the wings of the bridge. Like so. Two-fold reason for this tape. One, it's going to stop the bridge from moving when we put the clamps on, because the bridge will have a tendency to want to, to slide like this once uh, once it's cramped. And the second one is that we will see in just a moment when I remove the bridge. have is the remainder of the shellac, about that three millimeter border that I didn't tape up. The reason I didn't tape it up the whole way is I don't know if you can see on the video but we've got this nice dark brown line running all the way along the edge of where the tape was. Now that if we taped up the bridge to its full amount we'd have that brown line running all the way around the bridge which is unsightly. So that's the reason we don't do it. The shellac can be removed relatively easily uh, simply by scraping it off. This is just a sharp knife, it's not a scraper. But we'll see. Okay. Rubbing the knife along the edge, up to the edge of the tape 
won't <coughs> you won't be damaging the shellac on the other side of the tape. You'll just run it up to the front edge of the tape. Like so. And you do so until it's really clean. Okay, so that's scraped off uh, as much of that shellac as we can get. So now I just get a piece of sandpaper and I sand it across the grain lightly, like so, all the way across it because I want to make sure any of the, the adhesive from the tape has been removed. white dot we don't need that anymore simply rubs off with you use a nice white china graph pencil and that's where the bridge is going to sit the tape is going to stop the bridge from sliding when we put the cramps on so it's still got an important job to to do and because it's um, uh, it's painters tape which has this light adhesive on it it will also come off the French polish without damaging it so all I've got to do now is heat up the glue pot, get my cramps, uh, get them in position and be ready to stick it on. We're going to use hide glue to stick the bridge on and so uh, I'll just get things ready. Okay so the first cramp that we'll look at is uh, this little device. Uh, this is going to sit in there and this is going to sit underneath the uh, bridge saddle and tie block area uh, just to make sure that we don't depress the top in any way. Incidentally, I will have gone through this before now with my students but the bridge needs to fit the top precisely. So this goes in here very carefully. We've got to remember that we don't want to go damaging the French polish and it'll sit there I put a little piece of rubber, it's neoprene as it turns out, on top there, and a block of wood on top of that, like so, just so I'm not damaging the bridge. And I do that up like that, just so as it holds. And then this end of the cramp here, um, if I just put another block there, with a little bit of rubber and neoprene as I say like so it'll hold it in place so now this can be removed like so and we've got our clamp nicely in position so we don't have to worry about it because we do have to worry a little bit about how long this takes when we're using high glue the wings of the bridge will be stuck with these cramps like so they will go in the sound hole and these cork blocks, which I've stuck on there with a bit of uh, bit of tape, just to hold them in place. 
uh, again will stop us marking the inside of the top and will hold the bridge nicely in position. So all we've got to do really is to stick it on. So I'm just going to moisten the underside of the bridge with a little bit of warm water like so. You don't need to, uh, doesn't need to be soaking wet. <coughs> I'll just stir the glue to make sure it's uh, okay. Now you can either put the glue on the bridge or on the soundboard, whichever way, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to spread it all over the bridge, like so. So there's our glue. Like so, make sure it's all over there. That can go back in there. And our glue goes in, our bridge goes into the position. Now please make sure that the bridge is on the right way round. You'll be surprised how easy it is to stick it the wrong way round. I had a student a little while ago that called me to say that he had successfully stuck on the bridge and he was thrilled to bits. About four hours later he called again in despair because he discovered he'd stuck it on the wrong way round course then it had to be removed. It's a situation we don't want to get ourselves in. So there we go. The tape is nicely holding the bridge in position, stopping it from sliding. So again a little bit of something to protect the, uh, the bridge with. The bridge isn't uh, absolutely finished at this point of the proceedings. It, it could use uh, to be burnished a little bit after this process because we will get a little bit of glue maybe stuck on the edges which will have to be removed. I'll remove as much of it as I can as we go. So again on that side like so. We'll get this one in. Again you need to be very careful of the top. We don't want to go scratching it at this time. Seeing as we've just spent all our time French polishing it, the last thing you want to do is put a nice healthy scratch in it. So be careful as you put the cramps in and just as careful as you remove them. And so there, basically, the glow. <coughs> the bridge is stuck in position. We can now remove our tapes, which I shall do so very carefully, like so. Disregard that. We'll have a quick look at it. Remove these tapes here. Care needs to be taken again. We don't want to go scratching the guitar. Like so we can see a little bit of glue squeezed out there. So once we've removed these tapes, we'll go around it with a damp cloth just to remove any glue that might be sitting on the top. Mm, this tape should peel off relatively easily. As I say, it's a low, very low adhesive type of tape, so we don't usually have much problem with removing it. So we'll get our damp cloth and simply go around the edge just to make sure that we've removed all of that glue to the best of our ability. Like I say, we'll go around with a, a dry cloth as well just to make sure we've got it. Like I say, we can uh, burnish the area around the bridge and the bridge itself at a later date. Certainly not till tomorrow. <coughs> and uh, remove any excess smearing or something that might have taken place. Generally speaking, uh, the glue comes off very easily and we don't end up with too many problems. Sometimes the water can leave a little bit of a mark, <coughs> but more often than not. pretty successful. So, the cramps 
will need to stay on. I always leave them for about eight hours. I'm not in a hurry to remove them. The guitar cannot be strung up for a minimum of 24 hours. And quite frankly, you'd be better off leaving it for 48. I know at this stage we're all in a hurry to put the strings on to see what our work uh, has produced. But uh, you really should not be in too much of a hurry. 24 hours minimum. 48 hours is even better. So that's it.